Hi again, I thought we'd do a little video on current transformers. Somebody had asked a question about uh, low cost current probes for oscilloscopes out on EEV blog. Somebody had asked about using an off the shelf ferrite that was a split core to do a current sense. Something like this where it's already got the hinge built into it. You could clamp this around your wire. I had referred him to an article that was out on the internet and I'll post the link to that article. That article was published by Kenneth Wyatt. In that article he was using the current transformer for doing debug work. So he wasn't necessarily concerned about the flatness of the signal. He had made that probe out of just using a standard Stewart part. So I've gone ahead and uh, reproduced that the best I could. And I thought I'd demonstrate that against some other normal type current sensors. I'm not going to hook this up, but this is a uh, shunt here. This is a 50 amp Weston. It's a pretty much an antique. You can see it's a four wire shunt. This is another Weston shunt. This one's rated for 500 amps. These are still fine. I've used these from time to time. You can see it's on a nice wooden base. This is a standard Pearson. This model is a 410. I use this pretty frequently. This is rated for uh, 50 amps RMS. It's got a 3 dB bandwidth of 120 hertz all the way up to 20 megahertz. I'd recommend uh, if you're interested in this type of thing to uh, check out the patents for this. It's uh, very revealing. This is a current transformer made by LEM and this model is an LA55P. This is also good for 50 amps RMS. It has a 3 dB point at 200 kilohertz and will run all the way down to DC. This will go all the way up to uh, plus or minus 70 amps. So it's a pretty versatile uh, unit but it doesn't have the bandwidth that this current transformer does. Of course this can't run all the way down to DC. This is my other current probe. This is a old Tektronix P6042. This is good for about 7 amps RMS to about 1 megahertz. It was good for 50 megahertz from the factory. Uh, this probe has been modified. It actually has a bandwidth closer to about 100 megahertz now. So the probe itself is actually good for fairly good bandwidth. It's just a matter of uh, retuning the amplifier and doing a little bit more work with the compensation. But it works pretty nice. And here I have the replica of the Kenneth Wyatt article. Again, this is uh, seven turns of Teflon wire wrapped around a Stewart 28A2024-0A2 core. You can see it's just a split core. Pops on the side. Wire just connects to a BNC jack here. My plan is to connect all three of these sensors along with the Tektronix current probe together in line with my HP ARB and I'm just going to drive a 50 ohm terminator and we'll see how these all kind of compare. Here I just have all the sensors kind of butted up against each other and I've got a couple of alligator clips connected to this uh, BNC on the coax and those alligator clips are just basically routed through all the current sensors up to a uh, precision 50 ohm resistor. And I can tell you right now uh, this is not going to be good for RF work. When I tried to get the Tektronix probe working at higher frequency I started out using the loop of wire with a 50 ohm resistor and that worked very poorly. Uh, so I constructed this loop and uh, this worked a little better but uh, it definitely was not good for the RF work. I end up making this fixture for it and you drive one end of this with your amplifier and the other end is then connected to your terminator and this works very well. So this is the level I had to go through before I could even start working on that Tektronix probe to get the frequency up. Uh, you know, well you'd never expect a piece of 6 inch wire out there to do anything at 20 megahertz anyway but uh, just just be aware of that as we're kind of going through this that the <laughs> these results are going to be pretty poor. You can see here this is the homemade probe. It's going to channel 1 or the yellow trace. The Pearson probe is on channel 2. The LEM is on channel 3. And the Tektronix probe will be on channel 4 which is in our green trace. The yellow trace up on top, this is the homemade probe. In the second trace here, this is the Pearson transformer, and you can see it doesn't work again down at DC. Next trace here, this is the LEM, 
and then the fourth trace here the green trace this is our tectronic scrim probe so we can see here that the uh, tectronics probe and the lem pretty much line up uh, our Pearson transformer obviously we get a spike right at the edges of our square wave again this is a just a one hertz square wave so let's just go ahead and uh, select a sign and I'm going to increase the frequency to 10 hertz and again we can see the LEM and the tectronics probe are very closely matched here we are at 20 hertz here we are at 50 hertz and here we are at 100 hertz again we can see the LEM and the tectronics probe very close this is close to the 3db point for the Pearson transformer which again that's in red So, you know, all very similar. Here we are at 200 hertz, 300, 400, 500. This is one kilohertz. And you see all three probes are very similar. Again, this is looking at the LEM and the Tektronics probe along with the Pearson transformer. Our homemade one, you can see, still is not outputting much of a signal. Okay, this is 5 kilohertz. I expect the uh, homemade probe here is going to really start to skyrocket. We'll just keep that uh, channel attenuated here. So again, this is uh, 5 kilohertz. Here we are at 10 kilohertz. 20. 30. 40. 50. 60. That homemade transformer is not going to flatten out just yet. Not at 60 kilohertz. Here we are at 100 kilohertz. You can see now the LEM is really starting to attenuate. But the Tektronics probe, which again is in green, and our Pearson transformer are pretty much dead on. This is looking again at 500 kilohertz and again we can see the Pearson, the Tektronics are fairly close and our LEM now is pretty much not displaying anything. And here we are at 1 megahertz. So what I'm going to do is uh, just turn the LEM off. So this is 2 megahertz. 3, 4, 5. Here we're at 10. And this is pretty much the limit of the generator right here at 15. So really, once you get above, if you were interested in looking at signals maybe in the 1 megahertz range, uh, just using this uh, homemade probe by itself uh, does a pretty good job. Let's uh, hook this up to an RF generator. So really, yeah, that homemade probe isn't all that bad. Again, this is a uh, 28 megahertz homemade probe in yellow, tectronics in green, 14, 7 megahertz, 3... 3.5, 1.8, uh, 
in uh, 440 kilohertz.